It is Wednesday, September 28th, 2011. We have got a jam-packed InfoWars nightly news lined up for you this evening. The good, the bad, and the ugly in the collision between those that love liberty and those that love bondage and enslavement. The war is on, and it's a war on for your mind, your property, your children, your destiny, your currency. Coming up, historian and economist Webster Tarpley will be joining us on what's happening in Libya, the Middle East, Iran, and the economy. But first, let's get straight into the news. Wow. Our crew just got back, as you saw earlier in the week, from the big Denver martial law drill Mountain Guardian. And I wish I had crew to send them to this one, but we're looking at having Luke Radowski report for us tomorrow uh, and on Friday, so look for that here. But this D.C. to host simulated disaster exercise, they admit it's a drill to put people in the sports stadium, force inoculate them. Uh, they've got a, quote, mass casualty morgue exercise. This is some wild stuff that WTOP, News Talk Radio, and local television uh, is reporting on. So we'll continue to track that as it unfolds. And again, looks like Luke Radowski is going to be able to be in D.C. It kicked off today, but there's other drills coming up, so hopefully we'll have him pop in in the next few days to give us a breakdown of that. Now, speaking of forced inoculation, you'll remember earlier in the week we showed you clips of newscast uh, in California where they're going to people's doors and saying, it's the law, you got to take shots when there is no law. Well, now... Mike Adams, and he's going to be joining us tomorrow in studio of Natural News, has confirmed that the CDC is now calling U.S. households and demanding child immunization records as part of a vaccine surveillance and tracking program. So the feds are completely out of their jurisdiction and completely out of control, totally financed with big pharma. See, they had near 95% vaccine compliance in previous decades. Now it's totally swung, the pendulum. The vast majority, in some areas of California, it's above 70%, are not taking vaccines. And so now they're really trying to bully. They're really trying to intimidate uh, with this door-to-door -door forced inoculation and the feds calling you up and harassing you. Now, talking about the feds, we first learned three years ago, and it was in California, Alabama, and other major newspapers in major states, that the Marines, the Army, and others were showing up at checkpoints with guns and pulling citizens out of their cars. That violates posse comitatus, which is a federal law, and it's a felony act when they do that. But Kurt Nimmo wrote a report about this and linked to the Star Tribune a newspaper as well as uh, the Posse Comitatus Act itself. Wyoming program targets underage irresponsible drinking and they see this as a way to psychologically get the public to accept military on the street like we're Mexico or North Korea or something, uh, or China for that matter, or Russia. So it's like, oh, yeah, the Marines and Army are out, and they're going to search your car, not on a base, but on the side of the highway, because we're looking for underage drinkers. This is just an excuse to further acclimate the public, and, and, and it's just incredible, incredible uh, information. Now, speaking of the police state, we made a big deal out of this a couple months ago. In fact, we broke the news on air, and people couldn't believe it until national news went and checked it, and it was confirmed. I talked to multiple Texas gun dealers who were visited by the ATF and given letters, and we published the letters, that outside of law, they couldn't get this passed as a law this year, so they just had the ATF come and say, when you sell multiple rifles, Go ahead and report it to the ATF. Well, it's already reported to Nix and the FBI with the phone call to make sure you're not a criminal. So it was just mainly about people complying outside of law. And that was my prediction. Now, look at this document cam shot. U.S. Department of Justice, and this is confirmed, uh, the normal website that's for the national legalization of uh, marijuana laws uh, reporting on it. And, and here's the ATF letterhead down here. And we made calls that confirmed this. They are now telling gun dealers, somebody comes in, gives them their driver's license, they call the FBI, they do the instant check, but they're not a felon. Does it matter? 
they have to ask them if they're a medical marijuana person under legal state laws. And this letter says, we don't care what the state laws are. Read it. It's up on Infowars.com right now. Kurt Nimmo's written an article about this. They say, we don't care if you're a marijuana, uh, medical marijuana patient, like my grandfather who was dying of cancer. And, um, you know, his buddy, the sheriff, even came by and said, here's some marijuana I confiscated. Smoke this. It'll make you be able to eat. And my grandfather, Jerry Jones, and he said, no, I'm just going to go ahead and die. The point is, it does help people hold food down. It's got treatments for glaucoma. Uh, it is a miracle herb like garlic or aloe vera. I mean, it's got hundreds and hundreds of uses. And the majority of states have passed laws saying, for medical reasons, it's fine to use it. And this is so incredible that outside of law, the feds are coming in and saying, even if you sell a gun to somebody and don't know they're a medical marijuana user and have a medical marijuana state law card, we're going to prosecute the gun dealer, the gun shop, and we're going to prosecute the marijuana, medical marijuana user. I mean, this is incredible tyranny. Every time I think I can't be shocked by a new level of oppression and corruption, government just takes it to a new level. I, in fact, I meant to cover this tonight. Make me cover it tomorrow, dude. It was in my stack. I didn't get to it. A judge has ruled that you're not allowed to have your own garden. A judge has ruled that because people sued saying I'm allowed to have a garden I'm allowed to do this and the judge said you under the police power have no right to grow a garden it is not a right to grow your own food and, I mean that's what I mean I'm so overwhelmed right now that I'm just moving from point to point in fact Rob it was on Infowars today and I actually had it in my stack in fact it the problem is they clean my broadcast desk off and pile it up every day Make me tomorrow cover that uh, issue with Mike Adams when he's on, okay? Because, because I mean, that's what I'm saying. I can't even cover it all here. That's what's frustrating. I can't spend an hour and a half or two hours like I would 10 years ago on the ATF saying, well, we don't need any stinking laws. And it says right here, we don't care if your states have passed laws saying you can have medical marijuana. They actually say... If you sell a gun to somebody that uses medical marijuana, we're going to imprison you. This is so out of control. Meanwhile, the federal government's on record letting the Sinaloa drug cartel that runs the U.S.-Mexican border ship in tens of tons a month for five years of cocaine and the ATF shipping them firearms 2,000 at a time to kill drug cartels that don't launder their money through U.S. government. They just want to harass poor cancer patients and people that are smoking marijuana and harass American citizens. And I, for one, am sick and damn tired of the treason of the ATF and the stinking federal government. But at the end of the day, it's our fault for acting like cattle and putting up with this crap. I don't even smoke marijuana. And I understand the incredible medical uses for it, and it's an excuse to target the general public. Legalize it now and get the feds the hell out of our lives. It's on record, George Washington smoked marijuana, and the, his doctor's prescriptions from the apothecary, he grew it, but the, but the prescription where the doctor says, you need to smoke it for your stomach aches and your toothaches. They would arrest George Washington today in this country. I want this country to be land of the free, home of the brave, and not land of the cowards and home of the slaves. I'm sick of it. Okay, I'm done ranting. Look at this headline. Feds to legal marijuana Feds to legal medical marijuana patients. You don't have Second Amendment rights, period. Unbelievable information. And a judge, a high-powered state judge rules, you can't grow a damn garden. You don't have any rights. I mean, I'm sorry. This is it's like the Bob Dylan song. Pretty soon, having your own garden will be against the law. Yeah, I'm going to grow corn on the moon and eat it raw. I mean, what is going on here? What's happened to my, my republic, your republic? Now, I want to shift gears here to a news package that the crew has put together because I saw this uh, report yesterday. Well, I saw it at prisonplanet.com. Uh, Paul Watson wrote it. It was up on the Drudge Report yesterday, red linked. AP labeled racist for accurately transcribing Obama's speech. And look, I don't care what your accent is. I don't care what color you are. As long as you're bona fide, as long as you're legitimate, as long as you're a real McCoy, I'm into people that are authentic. 
And every time Obama gets up in front of a black audience, if he gets up in front of a white audience, he talks like Urkel. Um, yes, um, good to be here with you today. And, uh, and reads off a teleprompter. But as soon as he's in front of a black audience, he's like, it's good to be here with you tonight, you know, OGs. And that's basically uh, what's happening. And, and, you know, I've, I've had this with friends before where, where you go to a Mexican food restaurant and the person brings you over your food and they're like, that is good. Would, I would like a taco now. And the person just looks at you like, what the hell, man? That'd be like if I went to New York City and was like, hey, my name is Luigi. How you doing today? Or people that come down from New York and are like, how you doing there, boy? There's nothing more phony and poser and ridiculous and I, for one, am tired of politicians talking down to us. So we've only compiled three examples. There are many others. But the worst is Hillary Clinton. When she goes to a foreign country, she'll adopt some weird accent that isn't even from the country. Or when she goes to talk in Kentucky, she'll get into a redneck accent that's beyond anything I've ever seen. Like, how are you doing there, boy? This is an episode of Hee Haw. I mean, it is insane. I mean, I've got people here in my office from Venezuela. I don't walk up to them and say, would you like some coffee? Uh, again, it is an example of how the system condescends to you. They just look at you, have a stereotype, and go after it. And we got Obama kind of doing a little bit of a black preacher voice that isn't his own. And we got Rick Perry. And this isn't even the best clip. But I've seen the full speech where when he's not just speaking Spanish, he's just talking. He He literally is putting on this this fake accent. So it is entertaining, but in the final equation, it's very, very upsetting because it shows these politicians think we want something fake. In my experience, people just want something real. And it's insulting to act like uh, you're from somebody's area or part of somebody's religion or group if you're not. But it's all these CIA sociologists and anthropologists are admittedly the ones telling them how to act like this. And it's a major blind spot in the establishment. So let's go ahead and go to these clips. I'm going to press on. 